tuatahi tino mihi rawa te uh, ki a kui tāmati, kōrua ko Kristi, ngā momo kei wainga nui i a tūhoi, uh, a koutou whiako e pāna ki ngā whakataunga krimi, tā koutou whakataunga krimi me ngā uh, momo āhua tanga katoa hei tauira mai ki a mātou a ngā te mania poto me pēwhia i roto i tēnei āhua tanga nō reira kanui te mihi atu. Um, we're really keen to share some experience for our learn from uh, Tuhui and um, there are a few things that you raised at, at our uh, annual general meeting that we thought we might just uh, pursue a bit more and it was around, uh, firstly one of the things that you shared was the settlement experience teaches you a lot about yourself but trust um, within the iwi, building trust within the iwi. Um, we're interested in, I guess, your insights as to how the treaty settlement, with all its ups and downs, mm. um, gave people a sense of confidence, building trust, um, earning confidence, I guess, along the way. We don't think it's an easy task, mm. but we, we know that that's a huge challenge, is to build confidence mm. in, uh, in the vision, in the aspiration, and the treaty settlement uh, helping to achieve that. Mm. Do you want to share some things about that? Um, I think one of the first things I think to say is that uh, one of the greatest things that we lost in the colonisation process was trust in ourselves and trust in our instinct and our ability to make decisions. Uh, that was taken away with uh, responsibility for, our, for ourselves. And uh, one of the things we must be mindful of is the restoring of that to, to ourselves, and it doesn't appear anywhere in the treaty settlements manuals that that's what that's what you've got to look out for. Um, I think in in the treaty process, one of the things for building confidence is uh, the iwi looking at their negotiators, and the negotiators referring back to the iwi uh, and establishing consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, where you've you've plotted yourself, you've navigated a course that you're going to take. Um, you have to have confidence that uh, about the kind of settlement that you want that would be satisfactory in the circumstances, and and to be sure around that, and to always give direction in all of the activities that you do, the strategies that you come up with the tactics that you come up with, uh, that all of those things are directional mm -hmm. uh, towards the outcome that you want. And I think you you would make yourself nervous as well as your even when you change tact. Mm -hmm. And uh, because that, kind of, that may actually show that you've not estimated very well uh, your own position uh, and that of the crown. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's okay to pause and to take a bit of time as to make a judgment uh, of a different approach, but uh, you must be consistent and the iwi world would follow you as they see that course being travelled and the outcome uh, that they, uh, they have been part of determining uh, coming to fruition. So we were fortunate that of the 30 or so claims that we had, we were able to consolidate those into three or four main points. So uh, that was very helpful to the negotiations that we were after those three and, and any one less of that would be seen as a failure. Mm. So it's a clear message, this is what we want. If we can't achieve that, then we do not have a settlement. Mm. In terms of navigating the way forward mm. and keeping confidence of the people, you've got the five uh, key areas of the, the settlement, as you say. What was the process of engaging with the people and how did you regulate levels of engagement mm. and when were the critical points? Was that something that came easy or yeah, uh, I, how I did think you that, do it? that really had to be worked out uh, critically and strategically so we had to have a team uh, ready on board that uh, that would uh, correspond 
between the negotiations and the people making sure that we had clear, crisp, accurate statements of reporting back, this is what's happening, uh, this is where we've got to with, with that. And also uh, some feedback to the negotiations and uh, negotiators uh, about how they were doing, mm. whether they were ahead of the game or behind, or did they make that point clear or not. Mm. And uh, uh, a lot of, um, I think, considering our, our progress and what we were, we were achieving. And in terms of the iwi, there uh, was regulated feedback uh, both to and from uh, the negotiations and there were times then that we would invite uh, members of the EBI to come in and sit in on some of those negotiation uh, uh, events or, uh, or negotiations uh, sessions. We would also try and uh, move the negotiations some sessions to be here within Naorohe, mm. uh, others in, in Wellington, and then we would have people just sitting in, and then um, then after the negotiations, we, all, we would all sit down and uh, and say, well, what did you think of that? Uh, mm. how did you, uh, what did you think of the Crown? What were they trying to say, and how did we do? So mm. uh, that, that went a long way, I think, in demystifying uh, the whole thing and independent every people reporting back to their hapu, to their marae or to their tribal saying, yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, they seem to know what they're doing and uh, they seem to be on course. Uh, yeah, they were pretty smart. I, you know, I didn't think that the the crown was that way ahead of us. And uh, so that, that was really good. So it wasn't just our spin. Mm. Uh, going mm. back and said we did wonderfully well, you know. Mm. So mm. there was uh, independent thinking around that. So we took some young people, we took some older people and and from from around the, uh, the iwi that these are people whose, whose opinion would account mm. and uh, people would trust that, oh yeah, they, they don't owe the negotiators anything. Mm. So uh, that, that worked well as well. And, and also some of the Crown Negotiation team, uh, we would uh, uh, we would invite people to meet them at a, at a more informal level mm. and to get to know them as people that, yes. that worked well. So we did not limit ourselves as uh, two, two opposing negotiation teams that would only meet in that arena. Uh, we would uh, try and go out for dinner and get to know them as people and that really eased the conversations mm. um, and it, it wasn't as if everything had to be recorded and that we would bind every uh, each other to the word that you use and, mm. Mm. Uh, to that phrase uh, which was really good. <coughs> the values of the um, <coughs> settlement uh, mm. uh, for Tuhoi, how did you shape the values of the settlement? What did you mean by that? Mm. Uh, well your guiding principles or the things that oh kept you on track and it, it, uh, were, were there guiding values or principles that yeah, you, that for, um, for you as uh, negotiators or, or for the iwi in terms of the yeah. aspirations? Um, I, I've forgotten what, what word we used but I think... <laughs> what was it Kirsty? <laughs> what was the word? <laughs> yeah we had principles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, it was, uh, things like I, I recall was, oh, look, um, let's not play games. We're oh, yeah. really good at games. Yep. Um, uh, let's not exaggerate and uh, let's be as clear and as accurate as we can. Let's, let's be like we are at home. Let's be civil and mm. polite. And <laughs> if we're angry, if, if we're angry, we, we stop. We stop talking because yeah. it's, it's not good for us as negotiators to to get off your face and be angry then you're yeah. not really doing your job mm. or if you're angry at what they've said look uh, just say that oh no don't agree with that and but not not really detour and distract mm. things you know and uh, we would be good hosts if we were the host um, you know we would be thinking of, of their comfort and Mm. welfare. We, uh, we never for one moment forgot that we had uh, responsibilities beyond that of negotiating as well. We were representing our history and uh, all of the things that we were 
parallel, and um, and so that kind of uh, I think expressed a standard to the crown, and they were responding in kind. So they they noted how we started meetings and how we fed them, and so they changed their budget. Well, they don't know from from ginger nuts to <laughs> biscuits, <laughs> and, and and I think they. Uh, I, I think that's what they do. They they respond in kind to how the iwi. I mean, if the iwi comes in with ten lawyers, mm. well, they'll defend themselves with twelve lawyers. Mm. Mm. If your if your if your attitude is uh, continual distrust, and you want verification for everything, well, then they'll play that game. They're good mm. at that game as um, mm. um, as well. So through the deed of settlement phase, what was the biggest, I guess, learnings or insights, and in, just in the process with the crown, and then and then with the people, what did you gain from all of that as an as an insight? Yes, mm. sure. Oh, I'm stuck on your on your <laughs> first uh, your first question of, yeah. about how you know how did you how did you go about raising confidence? Because mm. that's exactly the path I. Mm. Uh, we, our job was not uh, to go in there and get the biggest check. Mm. Uh, it wasn't to go in there and become best friends. Mm. Uh, it, it was this, uh, this memory legacy uh, that that you uh, that, that you understand carry, and and how do you bring that about in this generation and the next? Mm. What does the settlement process offer that is helpful to that? Because the settlement process does not offer you everything. Mm. It is not no magic wand mm. or magic cure or elixir to to take sad, depressed Maoris and turn them into the honourable chief they were meant to be. Mm. The settlement process does not mm. do that. Mm. So, so then, how do you how do you approach a settlement? Mm. And it is that how you go about raising confidence and hope and optimism, mm. and and it's really quite boring mm. how one goes about doing that. You you can um, uh, Deiru Weta uh, was an uh, example of a cope of a here. Where where has the crown? used all of its leverage and assumed superiority to suffocate, strangle and remove your responsibility uh, over, uh, with the whenua. What rule, what tactic have mm. they done? Find it, remove it. Mm. And so the settlement process was an exploration of that. Mm. Uh, and it, be it begins with a very honest uh, appreciation of what you need to achieve right, <coughs> right at the beginning and then not getting distracted mm. um, by that and oh, I just I just remembered how times we approached that and started all of those conversations you know one of, one of the mighty ways was coming out of a marae hui a hapu tribal hui and then going into a Office of Treaty Settlements Kōrero where you're talking cultural redress, commercial redress. Mm. Irrelevant terms to you and I. Mm. So what's our words? Mm. You know, ah, te uh, That's your business, whether you're going to call that cultural redress or commercial redress. We're here for the return of te uruwera. Mm. Uh, and so when, when you can play with that language, it's really easy to feed that back to home. Mm. It gets tricky when you're the negotiator and you've got to talk. You've Two got to, languages. Yeah, you've yeah. got to say, yeah. oh, uh, you need to be really happy with me because I've done you a fabulous job mm. on this cultural redress mechanism. Mm. Now, which Mary do you know cares about that? Mm. But, hey, uh, been at it a couple of weeks. I've understood this thing about the weather, how they how they use it, how they 
uh, work it and I think here's the fault. Mm. See, now you're in a conversation. Mm. Uh, your whānau can debate. Mm. So you, you had to do that at day one. Mm. Mm. Uh, so translate in your own in your own whakaro, your well, you use your own whakaro to translate. Mm. You're turning up. What, yeah. So you're setting the process, yeah. mm. not, not the crown so. factory mm. cookie cutter mm. uh, process. They're kind of there uh, to be helpful. Mm. Um, good on them. Your job is to turn up knowing, knowing what you need, mm. Mm. and to believe that they want that too. Mm. 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 So that's, I mean, during the deed of settlement um, mm. process, that's your opportunity to chisel out, um, I guess, your aspiration and what you want to achieve in the settlement. So what, are, what were the insights that you gained from just that whole engagement with it? I mean, well, yeah. We didn't give it to a lawyer. Okay. Or we called ourselves lawyers. <laughs> You know, you can, cut it, you can cut it any way you like. <laughs> <laughs> and we wrote it. Yourselves. Yeah. yeah. So yes, you've got the, the Crown person uh, who holds the pen, but, but, if this, but we also wrote, we wrote that mm. deed of settlement. Mm. Mm. And uh, you check in to say, this is what I want to do. Um, uh, I'll use your words to affect that legally, mm. but this this dos is is ours. And mm. In a hundred years' time, uh, we're gonna pull this out. It's gonna be ours. Mm. Mm. And we'll. Uh, it's about then that we'll know if it was of any use. Mm. <laughs>